ministry of first bar ministry is uh, ICT innovation and youth affairs and within that we're talking of technology and young people and we've been able to see many needs for the young people many needs for technology as the world is becoming more digital so what we have done uh, first is make sure we have the right laws in place so we've put access to information and data protection put on the policies we've even put in a roadmap for what we're going to do with the distributed ledgers and artificial intelligence and so the achievements that we've had so far starting from infrastructure and getting cons up and running all the way to the digital jobs now we have in the Ajira digital program over 2 million young people working every day we've got all these constituency innovation hubs and the youth empowerment centers across the country over 310 of those we're talking of many uh, government services are already online on the e-citizen others in the Huduma center so a lot of work going on when we look at the industry itself Microsoft has set up the Africa Development Center here. Google have followed the same. Amazon have followed the same. ICANN, which is the internet operation for assigned names and numbers, is setting up their new service here. So everybody is coming to invest and uh, be in our country. We are the leader. We have just had the sixth cable, uh, undersea cable landing. So a lot of work going on and great. And at the same time, for young people, we've given them over 15 billion in supporting their businesses in the Kenya Youth Employment uh, Opportunity Scale. And, and so, you know, the last one I can say is the President had appointed seven assistant ministers that were youth, so getting youth also into government. So a lot of achievements. And you can just give us an example of what you just want to do with to, to leave Kenya a more interconnected country in terms of ICT. I would say one he has exceeded that because we, we are now seeing him with his support we are now already with Safaricom, we've gone even to Ethiopia, we've expanded even uh, our borders. His vision has been awesome. And in ensuring that as a country, we are recognized by everybody in the world, so he's done well for us. Asante sana. Karibu. Happy Madaraka Day. Thank you. Thank you.
our system of governance to a new old system of governance. And this has come uh, during the tenure of President Uhuru Kenyatta, and it has had a major, major effect in every corner of Kenya in transforming lives. And I'm so grateful that uh, the President can be the privilege of serving as, minister, as his Minister for Evolution, and we've seen how evolution has changed this country. We also are So one of the greatest legacies that the president leaves is engendering the security sector. Before the president came, we had no woman gender role. Right now, we have a, a major gender role, a Fatima Ahmed. That was the first woman uh, to become a general in Kenya. But we've also had 400 generals, uh, Brigadier General uh, uh, Yvonne Kirui, uh, Brigadier General uh, Joyce Sitchenay, Brigadier Molo, Brigadier General. Everybody gets a chance to serve at the highest level to have it as minister. And I feel very, very honored to have been asked to serve. Briefly, what would you say? What would you say has been the biggest achievement in the years you have served? The biggest achievement has been the biggest achievement.
happening in the administration of President Uhuru Kenyatta? It's been an exciting, life-changing, and inspiring experience. It's been a delight to serve under the leadership of His Excellency President Kenyatta. I've enjoyed working with my colleagues, and I think we have done our level best to serve this country with open hearts and dedication. Having served in three ministries, what would you say is the biggest achievement in your current Ministry of Foreign Affairs? I think our biggest achievement in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs was to win a non-permanent seat at the United Nations Security Council. We had to work very hard for it, and I think the work that we are doing at the United Nations Security Council in furtherance of international peace and security is groundbreaking, and I'm extremely proud of our team in New York, and indeed I'm proud of the whole fraternity of ambassadors who serve this country with passion. And finally, as one of the women in President Kenyatta's cabinet, what would you say has been uh, his drive in including women in leadership positions and has he kept his promise in including women in leadership? Well, President Kenyatta placed the women in his cabinet in positions of responsibility. He gave us very heavy dockets and trusted us to deliver. He inspires us every day to reach higher to break boundaries, to live fearlessly, and to serve our country proudly as women of dedication and women of promise. So it has been a delight to serve under him. Asante sana. Happy Monday, Rakade. Agriculture is among uh, President Kenyatta's uh, big four agenda uh, in terms of food security. What would you say has been the major achievement besides the locust invasion and the issues of parasites? Well, we've been driving reforms, especially for key value chains like tea and coffee, that have been very successful and have increased earnings for farmers. For the first time uh, this year, tea farmers are going to earn. Increase of uh, 10 billion on top of what they were they earned last year. And we've been able to pay the monthly the payments, the increased monthly payments. So, overall, uh, serious improvement in a sector that was struggling and farmers were actually uprooting tea. We have also changed the coffee sector, which the factories are now paying over 100 shillings per kilo. I would say those are major achievements. We've also revived. That was actually dead. And the factories or the factory now is now running. Farmers are back in the home by record, which is due to one increased uh, energy in this country. 
very briefly, how has it been serving in the administration of President Uhuru Kenyatta? Extremely rewarding. Extremely rewarding. Um, I think that um, it's probably the best, um, it's been the best um, delivery time for me uh, from 2013 when I was the Minister for Foreign Affairs, um, uh, where I uh, was given the, all the support, all the facilitation that I needed uh, to be able to put policies in place and uh, to be able to guide uh, the ministry from where it was at um, to where um, I left it. Um, and then I went through the Ministry of Education and there too I had the, the support, the free hand, the guidance, uh, the direction to do what was really required, which was put in, in place the policy for CBC and uh, draft the, 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 um, the, start drafting the legal uh, instruments for it, uh, but also come up with a training program uh, for, for teachers. So it's extremely rewarding. I don't think that uh, I could have had a better leader, I could have had better direction, I could have had a better support, better facilitation, and the overall just, um, uh, you know, a very... Uh, a representative, a uh, unifying uh, figure as president of the, of the country. So I'm extremely delighted to have served, very grateful, very humbled, and, and I'm really grateful to uh, His Excellency, and grateful to, uh, to the Almighty God for having given me this opportunity. Very briefly in summary, what are the achievements in the current ministry you are now, Ministry of Sports? The biggest that you would say we have really achieved? Well, I think carrying out the um, the president's um, um, you know, directives, um, including what was uh, in the manifesto, uh, the WRC bringing it back to the country, uh, building the stadia across the country that we have we've been able to build, uh, ensuring that our athletes, our best ambassadors, our best rep representatives outside the country are well catered for, putting them at the center of everything that, uh, that we do, making sure that we don't have athletes sleeping at the airports, um, are having athletes blocking uh, the streets of Nairobi because they, they have not been facilitated or they haven't been supported. Uh, you know, basically uh, ensuring that the sports fund, the excellency, the president set up, was used for the intentions uh, that uh, it, was, uh, it was established for. Uh, put the athlete at the center of everything, at the core of everything that we did. Um, you know, you saw what happened with the Olympics, best African country, 19th overall. And this, the next African country was like miles behind us. Uh, just recently, the next Olympics, we are preparing for the Commonwealth, we are preparing for the World Athletics. Here at home, we've hosted more events, uh, sports events that we've ever hosted, I think, in the history of our country. Uh, beginning with the, you know, World Cup 20, uh, to the continental tour that we brought to the country, the only African country that has a continental tour. And I think for me the highlight was the marathon on the, you know, the expressway that is actually the president has, has built for our country and one of the biggest legacies. And, and last night, last night was uh, totally uh, you know, amazing. It was uh, just phenomenal uh, that uh, we were able to see our heritage sites turned into a world, uh, you know, world renowned site that is called cool Bodies and of course the world would come and visit. Uh, achieving the vision that again is the excellency we had uh, for our country. And so, all in all, I think a very satisfying period for me. Uh, the last two and a half years have just been you know, out of this world. Could have asked for anything better. Asante Sana, happy Madonna Kadi.
a fantastic experience. First of all, I thank the Lord for the opportunity to serve my country, and I thank His Excellency the President for the trust he bestowed, and the opportunity he gave me to serve as his minister. The last 10 years I've been very exciting, uh, working in the public service and serving the country. Very challenging. And uh, we come to the end of this term much more knowledgeable of the country, and we understand that our nation other than we did when we came in. I didn't know the fact that we have been interacting with our people on a day to day basis and looking at things that affect the lives of our people. What would you say is the biggest achievement in your current docket of subject in education? Uh, in the current docket that is secured, what would you say you're proud of? Strengthening the security of our country and uh, ensuring that we create a level of confidence in our people. Uh, the threat of uh, terrorism still exists, but a lot has been done to reform the security sector to a point where we have enhanced capabilities and we are ready for any security challenges. For me, that is one of the best things that I have ever heard. There are many things I would say. I mean, the way we have uh, created the digital data sets, uh, the restoration of passwords that has improved, um, the issuance of passports that has improved from five or six days, it has been the past one day today, creating about uh, 13 different new sites of issuing passports outside Kenya and in Kenya. We have immigration officers from New York, uh, Washington DC, to Dubai, to Doha, to Victoria and South Africa, so that Kenyans, wherever they are in the globe, can be served by their government effectively. It's a great thing. Of, we have done many things uh, to ensure that Kenyans get the services that they need. And, and for me, I'm really proud when I meet Kenyan parents who tell me they don't have a problem getting birth certificates, they don't have to wait even for a day or two. I mean, Kenyans who tell me they are shocked that they can walk through their house and get a passport in a day. And, you know, all this data management revolution, which has culminated in the uh, human number, and the, the creation now, we are doing of a single source of truth so that every Kenyan is one person and we have collected all the data sets to make it easier to provide services to our people. It's one of the many things that I'm, I'm really proud of. I mean, there are many, many, many things I will talk about, but the whole 10 years has been exciting. The, the successful uh, war against cartels and examination cheating in the Ministry of Education was the climax of my service uh, to the public of Kenya. And, and, uh, very proud that uh, we succeeded to drive reforms in that sector. I am so happy that we succeeded to move our country from analog to digital broadcasting. You can see uh, the explosion of uh, broadcasting media in the country with over 200 radio stations and you know, interactions that Kenyans have. And the other day, when we were struck by COVID 19, we were able to have meetings across the board because of the broadband footprint in the country and all these developments that came as a result of uh, digital migration. So, the two times I was having other President Uhuru Kenyatta, I think it's probably the most exciting time in my life. Yeah. You also chaired the, the Development Committee, and would you say that President Kenyatta has kept his promise in terms of bringing development to the country and ensuring that all the projects that he started are implemented and to the benefit of Mwana Quite frankly, the president has more than kept his promise. He, he has offer performed. Because when you look at the Jubilee Manifesto of 2013 and look at the, what has happened, it, it's shocking. The president has offer performed and offer kept the promise. It was not just a matter of keeping the promise and sticking with the manifesto and the promises he made with the country. He has exerted himself and uh, galvanized his administration to provide services to the people of Kenya. And he has moved our country to a totally new level. I mean, our neighbors and everyone around is shocked about some of the things we're able to do as a country. It's just that as Kenyans, sometimes we beat ourselves too much and so on. But truth be told, I mean, I hear a lot of stuff has happened and the, the, the country is, is way, way ahead of, uh, you know, where it would have been if the president just kept the promise. My sister, we have hired 20,000, over 20,000 new police officers in the country. Every year, we added 10,000 police officers into our force. For the, for the 10 years, it's almost 100,000 police officers we have brought in. We moved our ratio from one police officer to the population, one to 900, to one to 600. And then if you look at the special formations we have in the security sector right now, we are able to police our country very effectively. As I speak to you right now, 
My security sector has got 26,000 brand new vehicles moving around the country through the motor vehicle leasing program. I can reach every part of the country because every account commissioner, every deputy account commissioner, and every administrator is able to move around. We, we could not talk about this in 2013. I mean, we were having, we, we came to government when all of us were pushing vehicles. Sometimes they don't have fuel, sometimes they cannot get to places. But that's not something to talk about these days. Our new acquisitions and the capacities that we have built, that's where we are able to go to every nook and corner of the country and provide a grid to our people. Even the challenges we face, the, whether it's of cut wrestling, community crashes and so on, they are far too insignificant to even talk about compared to where we were in 2013. And we are dealing with them. Where they come up like Mansabit, where they come up like in uh, Leo Marquette, we are present, we are designing methods of combating them and we'll keep our country peaceful. So the president has kept his promise, probably actually more than kept his promise. Yeah. Asante sana. Happy Madarakade. It has been uh, wonderful, and I must say, uh, serving under uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta has really, as a person, given me uh, a lot of uh, self-fulfillment in the sense that uh, I have served when it is my last uh, part of service in public service. 
and my last uh, five years with uh, Uru Kenyatta, I must say, have been very, very, very fulfilling. It has really expanded uh, my horizon on matters, uh, on matters uh, public. And uh, I think um, uh, in him I found uh, the best mentor in my, in, in, in my life, uh, enhancing my management uh, skills, institutional management uh, skills. Uh, a very humble uh, leader, uh, team, team leader, uh, through whom I have really learned a lot on, on how to handle public, uh, uh, also members of the, of the, of the, of the public, his uh, leadership style uh, is such that uh, he creates a uh, neighboring, uh, uh, neighboring uh, uh, environment. Uh, for me, as a, as a, as a manager, uh, such that uh, he will rarely interfere with your decision making, and uh, he will leave you to make uh, uh, decisions, right uh, decisions, uh, 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 without uh, any kind of uh, interference. But uh, he is there to, to always, uh, to always uh, guide you, uh, to guide you, and uh, to, to, to encourage you. And, um, and uh, in him, I, I, I must say, I, I have found somebody who has uh, really been able to, to, to really uh, make the best of myself in terms of. Uh, Managing, managing this uh, institution of, uh, of state house. And having served under President Kenyatta's administration, what would you say are some of the major achievements that he has delivered to the Kenyan people? I must say, Kenya has been lucky in the sense that uh, before uh, Uhuru Kenyatta, there was very little in terms of uh, infrastructure development. Uh, very little was invested uh, in, in, in it. As you are aware, infrastructure, infrastructure is the biggest uh, enabler. And uh, the approach he has given is whereby every part of this country has benefited uh, from one kind or the other of infrastructure, particularly the, 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 the roads, the road infrastructure. And I think that has really opened uh, this country and it has created a lot of uh, uh, unity in the country in the sense that uh, each part of the And then the, the other contribution that he has made is uh, institutional, institutional development. Uh, he has really made sure that he has really strengthened uh, our public institutions, uh, institution and uh, education, uh, institution and uh, security. And uh, if I may point out, aspect of uh, is, uh, institutional development in the security sector. Uh, having worked in the, in the security sector myself for a long time, I think I have never seen the kind of uh, amount of uh, money, amount of resources that Uru Kenyatta has really put in the security sector. Uh, I know of years when nobody bothered uh, whether uh, police officers and other security agencies uh, have houses to give in, but it is during this time that we have seen a systematic uh, program to have the uh, security agencies to have uh, good uh, accommodation, good equipment, good vehicles, and good salaries. And uh, in, that, in that score, I think uh, he has scored. Uh, he has scored uh, very, very, uh, very, very uh, high. And finally. Would you say that President Kenyatta has kept his promise to the Kenyan people and everything, everything he said he would deliver? If there was a way of giving him a hundred percent mark, I, I think I think I would, uh, because um, he has been uh, he has been awesome, and um, what he promised the people of Kenya, uh, particularly to improve their well-being. Um, the four pillars. Uh, the health, we have seen it speaks for uh, for itself. We have seen the, the number of health facilities that he has come up with. 
the health programs, effective health programs that he has come up with, the housing program. I don't think it, it, anybody would argue with the fact that yes, for the first time in this country, we have seen the magnitude and the number of housing units that has been that uh, yes, has come up. That is completely and is indisputable in terms of infrastructure. When you, you talk about a president who, after almost 100 uh, years after the first uh, railway ride, and uh, he has come up with a new whole set of, uh, of a railway, I, I don't think uh, you would expect anybody else to have done any better than that. Uh, I think it was a very bold move, even for him to think of uh, building uh, a, new, a new port in this country, also the inland port that he has come up. I think, uh, uh, to be fair to President Kenyatta, we can only award him 100% in terms of his promises to the people of Kenya. Asante sana. Happy Madara Kade. Oh, boy. 
bow our heads in prayer, and as we do so, let us thank God for this Madaraka Day. Let us thank Him for bestowing upon us the leadership, the wisdom, and the compassion of His Excellency, our President, Muheshimiwa Uhuru Kenyatta. For our First Lady, Margaret Kinata, and for all those who have served in this administration. Let us remember before God those who have made it possible for us by the considerable sacrifices made over the years, the founding father of the nation, now in Guinea, Kamam Zerjaramogi, who shed their blood and tears, that we might be free. Those who made considerable sacrifices, let us pray that we may become good stewards of the legacy that they left for us, so that we in turn can hand over the baton to those who come after us. We pray now for this day. We pray for His Excellency as He leads in the celebrations. That God's Spirit may be with Him and with all of us. 
For we pray, katika jina la Mungu Baba, Mwana, na Roho Mtakatifu. Amen.